Hi there, welcome to my channel. Today is part two of my bra making adventures. My first attempt at making a bra, which worked out much better than I actually expected. So in today's video, I'm showing you how to sew this bra. This is a partial band bra, and I made the pattern from an old Victoria's Secret bra that I had that I absolutely love. So that was last week's video, and in today's video, we're going to go through actually cutting out and sewing up the finished bra. So let's get started. All right, so I have my pattern pieces here, and like I said in my last video is where I showed you how to make the pattern for the bra, but I'm going to start with cutting out my foam cup pieces. So that's these two pieces here. So I'm using cut and sew foam. So I'm going to cut out the two pieces and then sew them together to make cups. So I need to cut out two of each of these um, cup pattern pieces. So I'll have four pieces total, two of each, cut out of my 1 8 inch thick cut and sew foam. Okay, next I've got my main fabric that is this nice stretchy cheetah print or leopard print, I'm not sure, but it's a swimsuit fabric, so it's spandex. And I'm gonna cut out my fabric cover cut pieces. So once again, I'm gonna cut out two of each of these pieces out of my main fabric. And do remember while you're doing this that one set of the pattern pieces needs to be cut with the pattern pieces facing up and one set with them facing down because you want two mirror images of each other for your bra cups. Next I'm going to cut out two of this center bridge triangle shaped piece and I'm going to cut one with the pattern piece facing up and one with the pattern piece facing down. And next I'm going to cut out two of my backband piece and once again, just like the others, I'm going to cut one of this piece with the pattern piece facing up and one with the pattern piece facing down so that I have pieces that are mirror images of each other rather than identical. Because you need a backband piece for each side. Okay, so now I have all my pattern pieces cut out, so we're ready to start putting this thing together. And I did want to mention that I do have all the hardware for this bra, so you're going to need your bra hardware as well. And you can buy a kit for pretty inexpensive. I got mine for like $10, and it has all the elastic and the closures and things that you need. I got it on Etsy, but... Basically what you're going to need is your underwires, which you can use the ones that you pulled out of the bra that you cut apart if you want, or you can buy new ones. You're also going to need the back clasp, and you're going to need strap elastic. You're going to need at least one set of rings. I used one, I used just one set. I think next time I'll use two. But, um, and then you're also going to need your Pico elastic to finish off the top and bottom edges of the bra. And you're going to need um, slides for the straps to make the straps adjustable. So I really recommend going with a kit if you have never made a bra before because it makes it really easy. The only thing you need to buy separately for, from the kit is just your fabric and the underwires. Okay, so now I'm gonna sew the cups together. So I have them in their pairs and 
I had the top and bottom marked so I know which side is the top and bottom and which ones go together. And now I'm just going to sew them together at that center seam. So I'm going to take them to the machine and use a zigzag stitch with a width of 4 and a length of 1.5. And I'm just going to butt the edges up together and then sew with that seam right down the center. So there is no seam allowance. The edges are just butted up in the center of your zigzag stitch. All right, so here's what the cups look like after I have them sewn. So there's no seam allowance, like I said. The raw edges are just butted up in the center of that zigzag stitch. So it's a really cool finish. And next we're going to sew together the fabric covers for the cups. So I'm going to just sew them along that center seam just like we did with the foam cups, except if you remember when we made our pattern for the fabric cover pieces that they have actually a one quarter inch seam allowance along that center seam. So I'm going to pin these and then I'm going to sew them together along that center seam with a straight stitch and with a one quarter inch seam allowance. Once you get your fabric cover pieces sewn, they'll look something like this. So the next step is to press your seam allowances open and then top stitch your seam allowances down on either side of your seam down the center of the cup just so that you don't have any bulky seam allowances. Next, I want to reinforce the top edge of the bra cups to prevent any potential stretching in the future. So. You can use twill tape for this or something like that, but I did not have any, so instead I just used some canvas fabric that I had left over from a project, and I cut one quarter inch strips of this canvas to reinforce the top edge of my cups, and then I basically just sewed the canvas fabric strips to right along the top edge of each of the cups with a zigzag stitch. So next I'm going to sew the corresponding fabric cover piece to its matching cup piece and I'm going to do this by sewing the top edges of the fabric cover to the top edge of the foam piece with the right side of the cover piece facing towards the inside of the cup so the concave side that's going to be towards your body that's where you want to pin the right side of the fabric cover piece and i'm just matching up the seam of the cup with the seam on the fabric cover piece and then pinning along that top edge and it's going to extend beyond the foam um, pieces because we have extra seam allowance on the cover piece so it's not going to be the same length as the foam piece it's going to be a bit longer so just match up the seams and then pin the fabric cover to the foam cup along the top edge and then sew with a one quarter inch seam allowance and using a straight stitch Okay, so the fabric covers are sewn to the cups, and I also went back in and sewed a zigzag stitch right on the very top edge of the cups just to kind of crush the foam down a little bit so it doesn't kind of stick out. So next, you can flip the cover up and over the top of the cup and cover the front of the cup with your beautiful fabric cover. And next what you're going to do is very gently stretch the fabric around the foam cup, making sure that you're not stretching it so much that the foam ends up kind of caving in because you don't want that. So just stretch it enough that it's taut and everything's laying smoothly, but the foam isn't caving in and everything's looking nice. And then just pin around the edge of the foam cup, pinning the cover to the foam. And once you get your fabric cover pinned to the foam cup, you're just going to sew along the bottom edge 
of your cup. Leave the underarm edge alone. I'm not going to attach the foam to the fabric cover along the underarm edge, only along that curved bottom edge. And I'm just going to sew right along the bottom just to attach the foam to the fabric. So I've got the fabric cover attached to the foam cups along that bottom edge and like I said I left the underarm edge not sewn and now I'm just going to go ahead and trim the fabric cover to the same width as the cup on along that bottom edge and once again I'm going to leave the underarm edge alone leaving that nice long seam allowance. Next, I'm going to finish the underarm edges of the cups with Pico Elastic. So I'm pinning the Pico Elastic with the plush side, so the more fuzzy and soft side of the elastic facing up, and the smoother side facing down towards the bra cup. And I'm pinning it so that it, the edges of the Picos just barely overlap the foam and I'm only pinning it to the fabric. So I'm not gonna be sewing through the foam at all in this step, but I wanna place it so that the picots, those little curved edges of the elastic, are just barely touching the foam. And then once I've got that pinned on both my bra cups, I'm just gonna take it to the machine and I'm gonna sew the Pico elastic to only the fabric, not the foam, with a zigzag stitch right along the Pico edge. So I've got my Pico elastic sewn on, and next I'm gonna finish this edge by turning the Pico elastic towards the inside of the bra cup so you can see just how beautiful that looks with the little Picos just barely peeking out onto the outside of the bra cup. So then I'm going to trim away that bit of extra fabric that's sticking out beyond the elastic just to get a nice clean edge. And then I'm going to turn under the top edge of the Pico elastic and fold the elastic to the inside. So that top edge is gonna be folded down underneath the elastic below it, just so that the top edge is nice and finished. You don't need to worry about finishing the bottom edge of the elastic because it's gonna be caught in the seam when we sew the cups to the, the bra band. And then you're just going to hand stitch the elastic to the foam right along the inside edge of the elastic. All right, so I've got my underarm elastic hand stitched down and it's just such a cute finish. Like you can just see the little picos barely peeking out. But anyways, moving on. Next, I'm going to sew the two bridge pieces along the top and bottom edge and I'm going to sew them with right sides together with a one quarter inch seam allowance and I definitely recommend that you interface these pieces. I, I didn't do that and I really regret it because you don't want the bridge to stretch out and mine stretches way too much because I didn't interface the pieces. And once you get your two bridge pieces sewn together you can then turn this piece right side out and give it a good press with your iron because it needs to be flattened out a little bit. Now let's finish the bottom edges of our back band pieces. So I'm using this wider Pico elastic. I believe it's three quarters inch wide Pico elastic. And I'm just going to sew it along the bottom edge of my back band pieces with the picos facing up and the plush or more fluffy side of the elastic facing up away from the back band piece. And then once again, I'm just going to use a zigzag stitch and I'm gonna sew it along the bottom edge of the back band right along the pico edge of the elastic. So I've got my pico elastic sewn to one of my back band pieces. I'm just going to trim the elastic right along the edge of the piece there. And then I'm going to turn the Pico elastic 
towards the inside of the back band piece and then I'm going to take it to the machine and I'm just going to top stitch it with a zigzag stitch to hold it in place and then I'm going to repeat that process with the other side. So the bottom edges of both my back band pieces are finished with pico elastic and then I'm going to grab my narrower pico elastic and I'm going to use that to finish the top edges of my back band pieces on either side of the strap attachment points. So there's going to be two edges that I'm going to finish separately on each of the back band pieces. So each of those top edge pieces just on either side of where the strap attaches and I'm just going to use the same method that I used with the elastic along the bottom edge to finish these top edges. Next I'm going to attach my rings to the strap attachment points on the back band pieces. So to do that I'm just going to fold the fabric through the rings and then top stitch it in place. Next I attached the back clasps to the back band pieces. So to do that, I just inserted the fabric into each of the clasp pieces. They have a little pocket for the fabric. And this is where I meant that I should have made my pattern piece a little bit narrower at this area in order to fit inside of the clasp. I made it a little bit too wide. So I had a little bit of trouble getting it to fit properly into the back clasp, but it worked out okay in the end. And then I just top stitched each of these clasp pieces to hold the fabric inside of the clasp. And I used a rectangle shape. I just top stitched a little rectangle along the inner edge of each of the clasp pieces. But at the very least, I definitely recommend that you go over it twice just to make it extra secure because the clasp is going to be getting a lot of tension when you wear the bra. Okay, so next I'm going to sew the bridge to one of the cups. So I'm just going to grab my little triangle bridge piece and I'm going to pin it to one of the cups with right sides together. And I'm just going to line up the top of the bridge piece with the top of the cup and then pin it down until the end of the bridge piece. And then I'm just going to sew this on with a one quarter inch seam allowance. So I've got the bridge sewn onto the first cup and now I just need to sew it exactly the same way onto the second cup. But it's really important when you're doing this to make sure that the bottom of the bridge is at the same point on each of the cups. So I'm going to actually grab a measuring tape and measure how far down from the top the bridge piece ends on the first cup and then I'm going to make sure to match that up on the second cup just so that when your bra is on it looks like the bridge piece is even across both, both cups. Alright, so the bridge is sewn on. And next I'm going to sew one side of the back band to one of the cups. I'm going to sew it of course to the corresponding cup. So to do that, I'm just going to pin the back band to the cup with right sides together. And I'm going to start it so that the top edge of the back band lines up with the underarm edge of the cup that underarm, finished underarm edge that we finished already with pico elastic and then I'm just going to pin it all the way over until the end of the back band piece. And then I'm going to sew the back band to the cup with a one quarter inch seam allowance. Alrighty, so the first side of the back band is sewn on and now I'm just going to repeat that exact same process with the other side. And just like we did with the bridge, you want to make sure that the back band ends at the same point on each cup so that it looks nice and even. So I'm going to use a measuring tape to make sure that um, my back band is pinned so that the end of the band piece along the bottom edge of the cup is in the same place on each 
cup. Alrighty, now we're starting to get close and it's time to put the channeling on. So I've cut pieces of channeling and kind of pre-curved them with my iron. So you just basically steam them with your iron into a curve. It's pretty easy. And I'm going to sew the channeling to the seam allowance of one of the cups. So I'm folding the other cup and the back band up out of the way so that the seam allowance is sticking out around this whole cup and then I'm just going to take it to my machine and I'm going to sew the channeling to the seam allowance right over the top of my first set of stitching and I'm going to sew it so that the curves are opposite so the channeling is curving away from the the bra cup and as I sew it I'm going to keep curving it around and it'll fit really nicely. You want the curve to be opposite because you're eventually going to flip the channeling to the inside of the cup. So you're sewing it to the outside now so the curve is opposite so that when you flip it to the inside the curve will be right. So I'm just going to sew the channeling right into that same seam line that I just just sewed all the way around the bottom edge of that cup so it's about a quarter inch in and and I'm going to be sewing along the just that outside edge of the channeling. I'm also going to allow the channeling to stick out from the top of the bra cup about a half inch on either side so that we have some extra channeling to work with later. All right, so I've got the channeling sewn onto that cup. So here's what it looks like. And I left about an inch at the beginning and the end of the channeling unsewn so that we can go in and bar tack the ends of the channeling later. So now I'm just going to repeat that same process with the other cup. Okay, so now I have the channeling on both the cups and the next step is to sew bar tacks onto the center front of each of the channeling. So I've already done that here and so I'm ju I just sewed bar tacks through the channeling right below the um, top of the bra. So I just did that by sewing a straight stitch across and back and then a zigzag across and back or your machine might have an actual bar tack um, setting or a, an actual bar tack stitch that you can use. And once I have my bar tacks done, I'm just going to finish stitching the channeling to the bra where it is still free at the center front. Next, I'm going to flip the channeling to the inside of the bra, and then I'm just going to stitch right along that inside edge of the channeling to hold down the other side of the channeling. So this stitching is gonna show through on the outside of the bra, so do keep that in mind that you wanna keep your stitching nice and even. Once I've got that done, I'm going to just add another row of top stitching along the very bottom edge of the bra cups right along the bottom of the channeling. And I'm just doing that because I think it looks nice. It's really not necessary for the actual structure of the bra because the bottom is already held in place with that bottom seam. But I just think it looks nice, so that's what I'm doing next. Now it's finally time to put the underwires in. So I am just putting my underwires in with the higher side of the underwire towards the outside of the bra, so towards the armpit edge, the lower side towards the center. So I'm just slipping them into the channeling on each of the cups. Then I'm going to finish off the outer edges of the channeling with bar tacks, just like I did with the center front edges of the channeling. Now the very last thing to do is just to deal with the elastic for the straps. So I'm actually just sewing my straps directly to the top of the armpit edge of the cups. I'm going to use 
about four rows of straight stitching to secure the straps to the cups, but this is where I was saying that I if I had had an extra set of rings, I probably would have used another set of rings at the front, but I did not have one, so I just sewed it directly to the cups. So the very last thing that we need to do is to thread the slide adjusters onto the straps and then thread them through the rings at the back and um, attach them to the back of the bra to finish off our straps. So I have my slide adjusters and I'm going to thread them onto this strap. So I'm going to go up through the slide adjuster, then I'm going to go back down through the slide adjuster. Then I'm going to thread the strap through the, through the ring, making sure that my strap is not twisted. And then I'm going to pull that um, end of my elastic back up through the front of the slide adjuster and then back down through the bottom underneath the first layer of strap that went through the adjuster. So it's a little bit hard to follow the video because I didn't zoom in quite enough. So I'm going to insert a photo now of what it looks like when it's all threaded so that you can see, you can just pause on the photo and then you can kind of follow the photo and see where the strap goes. Then you're just going to use a straight stitch to sew the end of the strap elastic to itself right below your slide adjuster to finish off the strap. And then repeat that same process with the other strap. Right, so the next thing I wanted to do was just to hand tack down the outer edges of the underwire channeling where it's still kind of sticking up. But other than that, the bra is now done and I know that that was a really long video and that's just because this was a really long and involved process, but it was totally worth it and I'm really happy with how it turned out. So I hope that you enjoyed the video and don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next one.